all right, folks, this is um, the review for exam two. Exam two is 60 questions, multiple choice only. You have 62 minutes to take it. It'll cover um, three topics, um, nutrition and growth, which includes everything we talked about, the nutrition requirements of microorganisms, types of media, culturing, um, culture media, um, also, we talked about the standard population growth curve, this, the population formula. Uh, we talked about the factors that can affect growth. So that'll be things like temperature, pH, oxygen requirement, concentration of nutrients, uh, and osmotic pressure. Um, then we talk about symbiotic relationships, right? Uh, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. And um, the acquisition of nutrients, heterotrophic, autotrophic, saprophytic, and parasitic. Okay. 26% of the exam is nutrition and growth. The vast majority of the exam is control. So control of microorganisms. We looked at physical control methods. We looked at chemical control methods. We looked at mechanical control methods. And we talked specifically about five different antibiotics. Be sure that you know the mechanisms of action and the, the, the information that's in the red, right, on the, in, that, in that PowerPoint for um, the, the antibiotics, so that is going to be asked about. Um, we also talked about some parameters for some of the physical control methods, right? We looked at um, autoclaving, we looked at um, um, pasteurization, and um, we looked at boiling. And then we talked about thermal input. Be sure you know what that means. And then we looked at the chemical control mechanisms and we talked about um, contact time, right? You do not need to know any of the specific contact times, um, but you do need to know which of the um, antiseptic disinfectants are the most effective, right? I'll be sure you know which organisms are most susceptible and which ones are harder to kill. Um, then we talked about mechanical and we looked at de-germing and we looked at um, filtration. And be sure you know about 0.22 microns as being the effective um, nominal pore size to remove bacteria. Okay. Um, and then of course the antibiotics. So 47% of the exam comes from control, most important Mo a very important um, segment of information when it comes to nursing, surgical technology, and um, dental hygiene, a bunch of different things, right? Important, okay? And then 27% of the exam will come from DNA and RNA biology. Be sure you know um, what DNA and RNA are be sure you know the replication process of DNA, the difference between a pyrimidine and a purine, and how they align, uh, the, the amount of hydrogen bonds that, are hold, that hold each pair group together. Um, you should be able to identify a purine or a pyrimidine when it is in a DNA strand, which one specifically. You should be able to tell me what um, five prime and three prime are with the forward direction of DNA replication is. Uh, you should be able to tell me the enzymes that are uh, used by the process in order to replicate the, the DNA strand, right? So that'd be topoisomerase, helicase, primase, um, polymerase, uh, endonuclease, and ligase. Um, you should be able to tell me about the central dogma theory. And then we go into protein synthesis. So you should be able to tell me uh, the difference between messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosome RNA, and their, um, and their functions in protein synthesis. I, I, there's a, um, there is a image that I told you I would use. There are several images that I told you that I would use. Be sure you know those images. Um, you should be able to tell me what um, what a codon is, what an anticodon is. You should be able to tell me the process of um, or the different phases of 
protein synthesis, right? Initiation, elongation, and termination. You should be able to tell me what the start codon is, right? You should be able to tell me what the three different stop codons are. Um, and then you should be able to tell me what a codon codes for, right? Using the codon table. Um, and then we talked about uh, mutations. You should know what a mutation is. Uh, it's an inheritable change in the DNA structure. You should um, be able to talk about the different um, yeah, I promise you I, I will where it's necessary, James, but if you feel more comfortable, James, you can have your own copy of a codon table. That is, that's acceptable. Um, so there's probably, I think I wrote five questions. So some of you will get a, a codon question, some of you may not get, because there's a total of 250 questions on this exam and you're gonna get 60 of them. All right, so I wrote a lot of questions for this exam. I've been pretty busy. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see, where was I? Oh, you should know, um, especially for bacteria, what are the mechanisms by which they can take up DNA from the environment, either through normal processes or through artificial processes, right? So you should know about taking up naked DNA from the environment. You should know what transposon is. You should be able to recognize the conjugation of bacteria, gram-negative bacteria through pili and how they can transfer plasmids, how those plasmids can be transposonic, right? You should be able to tell me what uh, transduction is. Um, and so that is um, exactly what's gonna be on the exam. That's, that's what I wrote about, right? Do you all have any questions about, about the exam, any of the content that's on the exam? Um, what are your questions? Anybody have any questions? You guys are ready? Yeah, it's at the very end. Um, so a transposon is any piece of DNA that can incorporate itself into the chromosome. And transduction, James, is the um, delivery of a DNA or an RNA for that matter, uh, for a, uh, the delivery of a nucleic acid into a cell by a virus. Right, so that happens in bacteria, but it also happens in us also, right? Okay, and all eukaryotes, it happens to every single organism. Yes, sir. What else? No mercy, that's on, that's on exam three. So, um, yeah, so um, the stuff that we're gonna be tested over, we finished on we finished last Wednesday, um, but I wanted to give you a little bit of time to get ready and to have a, a review. Um, so because we had the practical last week, I didn't want to bunch practicals and reviews all together. No, that's okay. No, that's okay. I, um, I just wanted to um, I just wanted to be sure that you had a little time. I missed that last statement. Yes, Chach, you will. Yeah. It's uh it's it's when we talked about drug resist antibiotic resistance, Chach, and uh, also the five mechanisms, right? So the five mechanisms that you'll need to know is the information in red, right? I'd said know this information in red. Yeah, for those yeah, for those five antibiotics, just in you are. It's multiple choice, right? But um, you'll need to know the mechanism of action for augmentin clavionate, for Bactrim, a sulfa drug, uh, for Cipro, a fluoroquinolone, right? For tetracycline, and for rifampin, sometimes referred to as rifampicin. Although I just call it rifampin, and I always write it as rifampin. Okay. Yeah. 
You'll need to know those. And those are all laid out for you exactly what you need to know in that red section or those red um, text in that pharmacological presentation that we did. Okay. Yes, ma'am. What else you got? Anybody else have any questions? Sir, sir, I have a question. Yes, Merce, what's up? It's Keisha. Oh, Keisha, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Um, okay, so everything that we're going to be tested over on this particular test is in the recording for the exception of today's recording, correct? Okay, um, I'm not following. So um, yeah. every I, 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 I record everything, right? Correct. So... So the recordings will be found under nutrition and growth. Okay. They will be found under control. Okay. And pharmacological control. Okay. And then and then the video that I sent you, right? Okay. And the video would be over DNA and RNA biology. Okay. And so it's it's exactly a lecture, Lakeisha. It's just I did it outside of our normal class time. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes, ma'am. What else? What else you got? Everybody ready then, huh? Oh, it's Justin. Hey, Just, what's up? Um, for the antimicrobial resistance, um, do we just yep. need to know what it stands for, or do we need to know the specific? Oh, so the only so the only one I asked you to know was MRSA. Remember? MRSA. So okay. you just need to know, you don't need to know all of them, just MRSA, because, you know, that's just being mean if I did that, right? So yeah. um, so I just said, just be sure you know MRSA, methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, because it's the most common one that you're going to run into. Okay. And remember, Justin, that um, methicillin stands for a lot of drugs that are in the penicillin family. Okay. Yeah. So when you say that it's methicillin resistant, you're saying that that organism is resistant to all the penicillins. Okay. That's okay. what I have written down here. Yeah. 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 And, and that's it. No, you don't need to know VRE, VRA, VRSA, MRTB. You don't need to know any of those, right? Just MRSA. That's it. Okay. Okay. Cause I don't want you all to go to nursing school and then somebody says MRSA and you guys say, I don't know what that is. And they say, who'd you have for microbiology? You said Pro-V and I'll be embarrassed right? Because you guys need to know that going into nursing school. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Questions? Uh, yes, Lucia? Um, is there another set of five medications we're going to have to know other than those antibiotics? No. Okay. Just tell me. Why? Do you want to? Uh, no, 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 no! I just couldn't. I don't have all my. <laughs> I don't have all my notes in front of me, and I couldn't no, remember no. if there was five I medications. Just, you know, I probably should have asked you all for candidates. I was, so I I don't remember who it was. Somebody, somebody, uh, yeah. They're really those are very popular ones, James. That's why I picked them. But I could have asked you all for other ones. There's a ton of them. But I just didn't. I, I um, Somebody called me and said, Praveen, are we going to do pharmacology? And I said, yes, but I'm going to change it. So I rewrote that presentation and, and cut it out. I think it was Rosa who told me I'm having a hard time printing. And so I cut it. And then when I cut it, I said, I need to revise this. And so I revised it to only, inclu to only include five of them, right? And they're only... Um, they're only antibiotics. There's no antifungals or no antivirals or no antiprotozoals, right? Just those five. And let me just tell you what they are again, right? Um, they're augmentin. And it has clavionic acid associated with it, right? It is cipro, which is a fluoroquinolone, right? It's Bactrim, which is a sulfa drug. Right, it's tetracycline. Is it amino glycoside? And then it is uh, rifampin. 
is an anti-tuberculosis drug. And it is um, really interferes with DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, right? So there are three different mechanisms, right? Augmentin clavionic acid, augmentin inhibits the linkage between um, between the, the naginam and the peptidoglycan and clavionic acid inhibits an enzyme called beta lactamase. And the organisms that are resistant to penicillin produce this enzyme that breaks down the penicillin ring, okay? Ciprofloxacin inhibits the function of topoisomerase and DNA gyrase. Therefore, the DNA molecule supercoils and the DNA doesn't get replicated and so the cell doesn't grow. Bactrim is an analog to paraaminobenzoic acid, PABA, right? And it blocks two important steps in the formation of new nucleic acids. Te tetracycline is an aminoglycoside and it interferes with the 30S ribosomal subunit, therefore not allowing for protein synthesis to occur. And rifampin interferes with the functionality of DNA dependent RNA polymerase, which is the enzyme that messenger RNA needs to use in order to make a copy of DNA in RNA language. So really it interferes, inhibits messenger RNA formation. And then because there's no messenger RNA, it inhibits protein synthesis, right? So in, in, those, in that two minutes, I just gave you the entire test for those five drugs. Those are the questions I wrote and I turned them around. So sometimes I, I gave you the drug and you had to give me the mechanism. Sometimes I gave you the mechanism, you have to give me the drug, right? So I turned them around and flipped them on their side and you know that way you have to critically think and you just can't memorize stuff. You have to think about what's going on, okay? You're welcome. Guys, I'm not trying to make this hard, I promise you. I'm trying to make this as, as good a course as I can um, in the environment that we're in, right? I don't, I don't, I work all the time, right? So Abdullah and I were talking or texting last night at about 1130 because I was doing things for you all. So I work all the time for you all and I'm not sitting there devising ways to make the course hard. Um, so um, just, um, I, I know, I know Nelda, I know. But remember, I told you I was worried about this course um, at the very beginning, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna take care of you, right? So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do everything I can, including allowing you to earn 20 points for just doing what you're supposed to do and do the study aid, right? So um, yeah, so guys, stay with me. Don't do crazy things. I promise you it's gonna work out, okay? Um, just stick with me. Um, I'm, and if you, have, if you have suggestions about what I can do, then let me know, right? Because I'm doing everything I can to make this course doable in eight weeks. Because really, it is eight weeks, right? We lost, we lost two days to holiday. And that last week of school is all exams. Uh, and I got to have that last day to, to give that to give that exam that is optional for people who really need it, right? I gotta have that day because I've got some things planned on that day. I don't know where I can just slip on my um, my workout stuff that I had on. Look, uh, Lakeisha, before you go work out, can you turn oh, off your mic? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. Anybody? So anybody else have questions? So guys, this will be the hard exam. Okay, it's got a lot of stuff in it. And it's technical, but the the rest of the exams are not that hard. Okay, be sure you spend time looking at the mechanisms. Okay, anybody else have any questions? Then it's time for the rapid fire part of our of our review. Right? I'm just going to rapid fire about ten questions from each section of which there are things that just pop into my mind, which may probably be on the test. So as you are here and you are here, you are benefiting 
from this rapid fire uh, portion of the review. Okay, so you can either chat it up or say it into your mic if you know it, and we'll go from here. Okay. Okay, here we go. Nutrition and growth. Okay. So, um, what is the most important nutrient that all organisms need? Not only microorganisms, but all organisms need in, in order to survive, in order to live. What is oxygen? Most Water, water, water. Very good, very good. But since you brought up oxygen, let's talk about organisms that will only grow with oxygen present. What type of organism is that? An arrow. Very good, very good, Miss Rosa. An arrow. Very good. What about those organisms that need just a small amount of oxygen? A microaerophile. Very good. Very good. And what about those organisms that can grow with or without oxygen, but they prefer to have oxygen if oxygen is present? What do we call those things? Facultative. Facultatively anaerobic. Very good. Very good. So be sure you know, you know, be sure you know, I'm going to, I threw a couple of questions in there where I used um, some of the FTM and I had the different arrangements in there for the stratification. Be sure you know that. Okay. Very good. If we look at uh, the types of media, if I was to add um, carrot juice to a medium to encourage the uh, growth of a certain organism, what would that media become? What would that medium become? Oh, <laughs> it would become enriched. That's right. It's, still, it's already a nutrient media, right? Would it be so, solid? No, no, it's already solid. Okay, so let me let, let me give you a, let me give you multiple choice, right? Would it become enrich, enrich, selective, or differential? Differential. No. Um. Enriched, right? I've added carrot juice to it. Are you with me? So I've enriched the media. Are you with me? What if I wanted to grow? I wanted to grow gram negative, so I added something to it that would inhibit gram positives. What would the media become? Selective, very good, selective. And what if I used a medium that could tell me the difference between two different organisms based on its based on its ability to break down? Okay, thank you, <laughs> differential. Very good. Uh, what is a natural medium? What is a natural medium? A oh, blood auger. Okay, it's a that's that's okay. That's natural and differential. Okay, let me let me ask this. If I know the recipe of something and I can make it over and over again, is it a natural medium or is it a chemically defined medium? You know, I you know what's in it. It's chemically defined. That's right. You know what it's chemically defined, right? Very good. Let's look at the standard growth curve. So imagine a standard growth curve, right? So think about the lag phase, the log phase, the stationary phase, the rapidly declining phase and the death phase or as close to death as possible, okay? Which one, lag, log, stationary, rapidly declining, or close to death, would you see the largest population of organisms in? Not log, stationary. stationary. Which one would you see death or the death of microorganisms greatly outnumber those organisms that are growing? Declining, very good, very good. Which stage would you see the germination of an endospore? Not the log. Lag. The lag. lag, that's right, that's right, very good, very good. What stage within the standard growth curve would endospores begin to form? Lag phase. Not lag, think we're playing. Stationary, stationary, very good. So remember, endospores get started to start to germinate um, when there is nutrient scarcity, okay? So by the time they reach death, James, but by the time that phase is reached, the endospores are fully formed, okay? Okay. Very Professor, good. can you repeat that question again? So which repeat. one? The, the yeah. last one we just did? The last one you just did. At that which stage would, would the endospores begin to form? Okay. 
Thank you. And that's going to be the end of the stationary phase when the, when the nutrients become scarce. Okay? Thank you. Okay. What type of symbiotic relationship is defined as a relationship between two organisms where both of the organisms benefit from the relationship? Mutualism, very good. What type of symbiotic relationship is defined as one organism benefiting from the relationship, but the other one is harmed? Parasitism, very good, very good. And what, and what uh, symbiotic relationship is defined as one of the organisms in relationship benefiting, but the other one is neither harmed nor benefited? Good, commensalism, very good, very good. What do we call organisms that grow in the refrigerator? What do we call organisms that grow in the refrigerator? Oh, you mean in like dry or? No, 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 sacrophile as well, based on temperature. Based oh, okay, on temperature, okay. okay. What do we call those organisms that grow in the human body and are so adapted to us that these are false, very good, these are false, very good, very good. Would, are bacteria acidophiles for, in, in general? Are they acidophiles? No, they're neutrophiles. They, they would prefer neutral conditions, right? Now, there are a few of them, right, that can grow in the stomach. But for the most part, they are neutrophiles. What about, what about molds? Are molds more likely to grow at neutral conditions, at basic conditions, or acidic conditions? Not as, oh, in acidic conditions, that is correct. That is correct, they like acidic conditions. Very good, very good. Okay, very nice. Let's move on to control. I think I did more than 10 questions. Oh, well, that's just the way it is. Let's, let's do control, are you with me? Okay, what is, if something is staphylococcal static, then what do we know about that particular um, chemical? Staphylococcal static. What do we know about it? It doesn't kill. Okay, can you be more specific than that? Uh, it inhibits the growth. It inhibits the growth of staphylococcus. Very good. Very good. What's the difference? Okay, which one of these two things, an antiseptic or disinfectant, is so toxic it should never be used on the skin of the mucous membranes? Antiseptic. A, dis, a disinfectant, mm -hmm. right. Antiseptic means it can be used on the skin of the mucous membranes. Give me an example of an antiseptic. Like alcohol? Okay, like alcohol. That's fine. I, I, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Hydrogen peroxide is another one, right? There's a bunch of them, right? Good. Um, let's see. Um, of the three different types of methods that we use to control microorganism, which one exerts a force onto the organism and therefore either kills the microorganism or inhibits its growth? Physical, very good. Which one removes the microorganism from the environment? And which one is related to contact time? Chemical, very good. Chemicals related to contact time. Very good, very good. Uh, let's see. What is what is the parameters of an autoclave? What is the parameters of an autoclave? 15 PSI, very good. And 121, <laughs> average 120, 122, 121 degrees Fahrenheit, Celsius, very good. At how much time? 50 minutes is convention, very good, very good. What is the parameter for flash pasteurization? 71.6. At degrees. how long, for how long, Celsius. for how long? Uh, is it 72 seconds. 15 seconds. 15, 15 seconds, very good, 15 seconds, very good. What is the parameter for batch pasteurization? 63 to 66 degrees. For, for how long? 30 minutes. Good, good, good. And which one of those batch or flash would you actually pasteurize milk with? Uh, batch. 
batch. Flash is too hot. It'll, it'll, it'll caramelize the milk, right? So flash is more used for beers and juices and things like that. Okay. Very good. So what is the difference? Okay. Let me fix this. Um, is UV a method of sterilization or a method of disinfection? Disinfection, very good, disinfection. And what wave, A, B, C, D, or E, do we use UV at? What, what's, the, what's the type, A, B, C, D, or E? C, very good. Um, and what is the mechanism that is used, or what is the mechanism of action for radiation? A, a wave is like, um, what a wave is like what nanometers? So they're microwaves, they're radio waves, and, and there are gamma waves and X rays and they're UV waves, right? So that's what I mean by a wave. Okay. Professor, where did the A yeah. A B C D come from? I'm confused about that. That's the type of that's the type of UV that's used, right? Oh, there are okay. lots of different types. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And what is the mechanism of action for radiation? What does it do? What, what macromolecule does it affect? What macromolecule does it affect? DNA, very good. What does it do specifically to the DNA molecule? Uh, creates, uh, or breaks this disulfide. Oh, okay. Um, Dimer. Oh, the thymine dimer. Thymine dimer, very good. Yeah, it stops it from replication, but thymine dimer is what I was looking for. Okay, very good. All right, let's go to chemical. So, what is the most, what is the most common target for a chemical antiseptic or a chemical disinfectant? What is the most? What's the easiest target? No, well, not mm, plasma, the, the, not the plasma, but the plasma membrane, the plasma membrane. Very good, very good, very good. What is the mechanism of action for halogens? What do they do? What's the mechanism of action for halogens? Uh, not, not, not salt concentrates. So that, that's a halophile or a hypertonic environment when we talk about salt concentration. Halogens are things like fluorine, bromine, chlorine, and iodine. What do they do? Denature, okay, no. Like oxidize? Or They're oxidizers, that's right. They oxidize everything they come in contact with. They, and it only takes them a few seconds to kill just about anything they come in contact with, right? Because of the way they form, before the way they form radicals. Very good, okay. What is the mechanism of action for heavy metals? What is the mechanism of action for heavy metals? Not denatures protein. They block what, Lakeisha? Protein? What about the protein do they block? Um, I'm not certain. The binding sites, very good, Gabriela, oh. very good, very good. The binding sites, very good, very nice, okay? Um, let's see, what else? Uh, let's see. Oh, um, what, what, um, what chemical will alter the structures of amino acids to move it from an acidic to a methyl group? and therefore inhibit the growth and destroy the microorganism. What is the, what is the type of chemical that does that? Aldehydes, very good. So that is the name of that. Can you give me the group? Gabrielle, that's correct, but that's the name. Not a phenolic, right? A phenolic attacks plasma membrane denatures Nucleic acids is the macromolecule, Angeles. I'm asking for the name of the of the chemical, right? So your choices are ethylene oxide is another example of it, right? So the choices are a 
phenolics, B, alcohol, C, halogens, D, detergents, E, heavy metals, F, alkylating agents. Which one of them alters the structure? Alkylating agents, that's right, alkylating agents. Very good, very good, very good. Excellent. So if you, if you get a question about a mechanism of action for a chemical and you don't know, right? So think about them, right? Phenolics, alcohols, detergents, right? They all attack plasma membrane and denature proteins, right? So if you don't know, that's a good guess, right? But then you need to know that, you know, uh, the halogens and the um, and hydrogen peroxide, the, the peroxygens, they're going to be oxidizers, right? Um, the alkylating agents are going to alter the structure of the nucleic acids and, and DNA and RNA, right? And then what's left over? I think I've covered them all. Heavy metals, heavy metals block the binding sites of, of proteins. Yep. Okay. All right. Mm. So, what is the nominal pore size of a filter that would be necessary in order to remove the bacteria from an environment? 0 0.22. 0 0.22. Very good. 0.22. Excellent job. Okay, what does degerming mean? Degerming. What does degerming mean? Give me an example of degerming. Yeah, yeah, good. Hand washing your hands. That's right, Jasmine. That's right or taking a shower, right? Because of the amphiphatic nature of the detergent, the soap, the surfactant, right? What does amphiphatic mean? What does amphiphatic mean? Polar, nonpolar, very good. Like it, like it, like it. And the polar binds to what? The water, and the nonpolar binds to what? The nonpolar, to lipid, or anything else, to the, the grime, the dirt, whatever, right? All that stuff. It encapsulates it. Very good. All right, good. So, um, which antibiotic um, inhibits beta lactamase? Augment. Very good. Which antibiotic interferes with DNA gyrase? Not penicillin, Abdullah. Augment. Well, so, Abdullah, you got to be careful because I'm not going to have, penicillin is not going to be a choice. It's going to be augmentin, right? Yeah. Okay. So, I forgot what I asked. Hold on a minute. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. Fluoroquinolone. Can you give me the name of the antibiotic, though? That's the that's the family. Can you give me the name of the antibiotic? Very good. Very good. Which antibiotic interferes with DNA-dependent RNA polymerase? Rifampin, very good, very good. Which antibiotic binds to and inhibits the 30S ribosomal subunit of, of the ribosome? Tetracycline, very good. And which antibiotic interferes with two crucial steps in the development of new nucleic acids? Bactrim, very good, very good. All right, let's move on to DNA and RNA biology, okay? So, um, tell me what the two pyrimidines are in DNA. What are the two pyrimidines? Thymine and cytosine, very good. And what are the two purines? Guanine and adenine, very good. And what are the base pairings? What are the base pairings? What are the base pairings? Not, not not tyrosine, thymine, right? Okay, good. Oh, look at look what Mer look what Angeles does. She put a she put two little she put equal signs in between the AT. Hey, Angeles, what are those two? What does that equal sign mean? Hydrogen bonds, hydrogen yeah. bonds. Very good, very good, very good. And guanine binds to cytosine. Very good. And in RNA 
um, guanine still binds to cytosine, but what does adenine bind through? Your cell. Very good. Very good. 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 So be sure you can you can identify the pyrimidines and the purines. It's multiple choice, right? So you need to be able to. Th there's a section in the video that tells you how to do that, right? So be sure you can do that, okay? Because there's going to be some questions on that. Uh, how do you know what the five prime is? Five prime end um, is what's what is the how is the five prime end identified? Oh, oh, there's a five carbon a phosphate group. The five the at the five carbon sugar there's a phosphate group. Very good. What about the three prime end? Oh, hydroxyl. Very good. And which the leading or the lagging strand? Which one of them is cut into segments and copied? backwards and then put back together. The lagging, very good, very good, very good. And what is the enzyme that cuts the DNA into pieces called? Endonucleus, very good. What is the enzyme that relaxes the DNA molecule so it doesn't supercoil when it's being copied? What is that enzyme? Topoisomerase, very good. What is the enzyme that in order to get copied, the enzyme needs to know where to get started. What is the enzyme, prime is very good, very good. And what is the enzyme that unravels the DNA once it's been relaxed, helicase, very good. And what are the fragments called in, uh, oh, okay. what are the fragments called that are made? Oh, Okasaki fragments, very nice, very nice. And what's the enzyme that puts the Okasaki fragments back together again? Yeah. So remember, there's a there's a um, there's an image I said I was going to use on the exam, and I have in fact written questions with that image. Okay. Good. Very good. Okay. Um, what does messenger RNA do? Copies DNA. Very good. And. In RNA language, what does that mean, Mercy? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean when you copy in an RNA language? Using RNA nucleotides are oh, very good. I like that a lot, Merc. Merciful heavens, that is perfect. Okay, so um, let's see what else. What does transfer RNA do? What does transfer RNA do? Yes. Brings RNA out of the nuclear. No, didn't do that. Is it trans transcribes or? It carries amino acids. I like that. Okay. So transcription, Lakeisha, transcription is the function of messenger RNA. Translation is the function of transfer RNA. Okay. And it's going to bring Thank you. the amino acids to the to the um, ribosome when they're being put into a chain. Are you with me? So where is the codon located? Where is the codon located? In messenger RNA, very good. Where is the anti-codon located? In transfer RNA, very good. Where is the stop codon located? And messenger RNA, very good, very good. And what is the start codon? AUG. Oh, AUG, very good. And what is AUG code for? Methionine, very good. Um, can you tell me what the three stop codons are? Oh, nice. Merciful heavens, very nice, very nice. That's right, it's UAA, UAG, and UGA. That is correct, Amundo. Mercy has just earned two points for everybody who is here today. I'm going to take roll in a minute. Do not leave or you won't get your points, okay? All right, uh, let's see. So that's, that's two from Mercy and two from Rosa the other day. Are you with me? So that's four already, okay? For those who, for those of you who were here during roll call, okay. All right. Let's see. Where am I? 
Okay. I think I covered all that. Okay, good. What to define mutation? What is mutation? What is mutation? Uh, mistranslation. The oh, 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 now you're getting all fancy on me, Mr. Justin. But James has said it very nicely. It's an inheritable change in the DNA structure. Very good. There's lots of ways this can happen. Right? Some of the more common ways um, would be, for instance, what is what does it mean when a fragment of DNA gets put into naturally, right? Uh, what is that term that describes the addition of a DNA fragment into the chromosome. What is that called? Not in, it can be insertion, but I didn't use that particular term. Extra chromosomal means it's outside of the chromosome and never gets put in. So this is an extra chromosomal piece of DNA that gets put into the chromosome, mercy. So starts with a T, ends with an N, has an R in it has an A in it, has an N in it, has an S in it, has a P in it, a transposonic, 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 trans, trans, transposonic. Very good. What is the mechanism um, if um, you have a virus that delivers DNA to a cell and then the cell and then that DNA becomes transposonic? What is that mechanism called? Lakeisha, your mic's on. Okay. What is the, not, oh, conju, conjunction. No, not conjunction. Transduction is very good. Transduction is very good. Yeah. Tra yeah. Okay. All multiple choice, right? The words will be there. The terms will be there. Okay. Uh, I think uh, that was a pretty good review. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and we'll continue to review like this. We'll, we'll, I will give you kind of an overview of the exam. You can ask all the questions you want. And then I'm just going to rapid fire questions. Um, I, I said 10 from each one, but I, I think I gave like almost half the exam away, right? So um, be ready, okay? The exam will start on Wednesday. I'll, I'll open it up about 8.50. I'll send you an email. You'll have to 9.20 to get onto the exam. And, um, and then after the exam at 10.35 or so, we'll have lecture. We'll finish parasitology. That's going to be my goal. And then we'll have lab. And then after lab, we will have a review for the practical that you'll have when you come back from the holiday on Wednesday. OK? Are there any additional questions that you might want to ask? Um, Professor? Yes, Angelis? Are we going to have to know the equation population, the NF? Yes, ma'am, you will need to, okay? And I have a I have a PowerPoint that I have placed um, uh, in Blackboard under Unit 2 that says population equation, and it's a video of me explaining how to do it. So you can look at that if you want to. And if you can't get that, let me know. Just let me know. I, I, want, I want to see the video on the population equation. And I turned it into a, um, I turned it into a YouTube, so I can just. Do you just want me to send the YouTube to you all? Do you just want that? Can you tell me to do that? I can do that. Okay, so yes, I will just when, when we leave here today. But the first thing I do after I have a sandwich, because I'm hungry, um, is I'm going to send you guys the YouTube video that has me talking about how you use the population equation. Okay, fair enough. I will do that. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Okay, so look for that email um, in about 30 minutes or a little bit less on that. Okay. Okay. All right, you all. I have a lot of confidence in your ability. I want you to be ready and I want you to do well. Okay. So remember, this will be the hard one. Okay. Get ready for it. Um, and and um, remember, I said you could turn in the the lab report and the and the outline on Friday. I am going to because I said that I am going to say that I'm going to stay with that. 
but really, <laughs> if you don't do the review before the exam, it doesn't really help, right? So uh, maybe maybe reflectively it does, right? So, um, all right. So anyway, I'm done for today.